we might hit this upper link. All right, so we successfully installed the rear end in the Bronx Star. Now we gotta get a front end put in it. We got a lot of really boring stuff to do real quick, so you're gonna see a wonderful montage. Now we need that to go there. We gotta remove the pitman arm because we're not able to get close enough to the axle where we need to sit because the pitman arm will hit. We don't want things to fall. We're gonna get six inches between the frame and the axle. You said six, right? Yeah. Just a bump. One more. What? Right there. There's six inches. He's right here. Dead on. We're gonna measure six inches. We are dead center. We're welding this bad boy in place. And that's all there is to it. All right, so we've got both sides welded. We're at 89.9 degrees. So we're almost 90 on the pinion. We only need four inches of up travel. So we're at about five and a half inches to the bottom of the frame. It's right where we want it though. All right, I'm gonna go up and we're gonna build us some four link thingies for the front end now. So this thing's gonna be capable. Or Owen's blazer is gonna have nothing on this. So our lower link mount is gonna be somewhere in this neighborhood on the casting on both sides. We're gonna to have to do some super penetrating welds, but we're gonna to have to make a spot here. We're gonna grind all of this, clean all that up, and then we'll notch this to make it fit. All right, so on the front, lower mounts. We're gonna do a little bit different than the rear brackets. I've got a triangulated four link upper bracket for the center that goes around a pipe. I'm gonna make it bigger for the size of this axle. I'm gonna notch these out, grind them up. All right, so this is what the bracket started out as. Okay, so it's got these keys that make it one of these, but it's got the degree of angle that I need. So the tube of the axle is gonna be right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna cut this in half and I'm gonna cut this and then I'll be able to put it on the axle, weld all this in and make it a big box. And it gives us that 20 degree angle that we need for this lower. So this is the end result. Now we've got to make them fit the axle. So on the front end, we can't double triangulate it like we did the rear because we just don't have the room. So we're gonna triangulate it from here back to the bottom of the cross member and then we're gonna come from the top. We're gonna to angle it a little bit in and go right to the front of the cross member. That way it'll miss the frame and not interfere. This exhaust is gonna go. We're gonna cut that out of the way. We don't know for sure, but we should have clearance for the drive line. Should just miss the drive line. We're gonna four link it right now and then we may end up having to modify it, but at least it'll be in. So if we take this upper bracket off, it's not quite fitting. So we're gonna have to modify the bottom. This should work. So we've got our tube radius correct. We just gotta make this lower bracket work. Just getting this bracket all tacked together. We can start getting our lower link in. So that's as much of it as I'm gonna tack. I'm not gonna tack the top on. The top is gonna end up getting notched. So what we're doing is we're figuring out our 10 inches of separation. So right there is about where it's gonna be. I got done tacking those together. My welding helmet battery's dead. My internal battery is drained. So we're gonna go get a drink and go to Napa and get some new welding helmet batteries. We all need a break, so let's go. Sometimes you just need to take a little break and leave what you're doing. Even though it's 4.30 and we're supposed to go home at five. Wait, we need a break because we need batteries for the welding. Oh yeah, that's true. It's kind of a forced break. $8.54 for two little batteries. And they didn't have mine. Wow, yeah, they didn't even have his. Didn't have my batteries. It's not Napa's fault, that's just the way this world is right now. Ice water to the rescue. That's for you. I will stick to the Diet Dr. Pepper. I know it's terrible for me, but you know what? It's the one good thing I still have in life. What about your wife? Huh? What about your wife? I can't drink you. <laughs> Jeez. Now that we got good batteries in it, it actually works. We're ready to achieve our 10 inches of separation. Need to grind those off the tips. All right, so we're gonna go as far out as we can. So that's gonna give us 10 inches of separation right there. So we're gonna be exactly 10 right there. So that's 83.7 degrees. Holy cow ski. We're above the pinion, so it's not a low point. We're gonna hit the ball joint before we hit that. So I think we'll be okay there. We're definitely gonna have to notch that out before we weld it in. So 
So we need to get all this cleaned off, but I think what we're gonna do is just torch it all off. So for now, we're just gonna get this set in place, tack it on, and take it to Weld Town. Houston, we got a problem. It's already binding. It's not gonna give us enough articulation. These gotta be twisted. All right, let's first... Fun, fun, fun. All right, we need to get our lengths here. So that's what we're gonna do right now. I think this whole mount needs to twist. It's okay, it's gonna work. Only three more times I've happened to do this. Getting rid of all the burrs. Perfect. All righty. All right, so here's the issue we knew we were gonna have. That's as far over and bound up as we can get it, and we can't even reach it yet. So we're gonna cut our tacks and twist this. We need to cut that and cut that. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna do some trimming real quick. Make this work. I need a grinder real quick. All right, so we think we've got this angled and cut and chopped. It might work. So I'm gonna check the separation, make sure it's 10 inches. All right, so right there, we can get about nine and a half inches of separation. How are you gonna put it in on the outside? We can use that upper bracket like you were talking and get our exact 10 inches out of it. We'll just cut that other bracket down. We won't use these. Hillbilly had a good suggestion. So we're gonna use these brackets while I hold this bar because he's tired. And we're gonna cut them down to our desired height so we can get an exact 10 inch separation. So what we're gonna do for now is just get this lower link welded where it needs to be. And then we'll worry about the upper link for the separation. One nice thing is we don't have a bind. We've got our 20 degree set so our lowers will be triangulated. This Bronco was not designed for one ton axles. So. Any vehicle that you put one tons under, designed for it? No. And then like I said, we're gonna use this upper. We're just gonna cut it down and get our 10 inches of separation. We're most likely gonna be having to notch the frame, but that's fine. We gotta go out as far as we can so that that doesn't hit when it goes up four inches. All right, so that's been enough screwing up for the day. So we're going home. It is tomorrow. All right, so we've got the lower link on the driver's side all installed. Ah, I'm dropping stuff. Sometimes I do. So anyway, Hillbilly's getting the frame all prepped because we've figured out how to do our upper links. So this is gonna get four linked. I was considering doing a, thir a three link with a pan hard bar, but we figured out our four links. I went home and slept on it. This morning we got that in, you check it out. We've got both of these links all in. They're right at the angles we need them. We're gonna do a triangulated lower with straight uppers. Now the uppers are gonna come right here and go under the frame. So we're gonna have, the upper links are gonna be level at right height because these are on an angle. You wanna have at least one of your sets of bars, whatever they're called, um, level. I've called Paul, I called Rory. I've talked to all the people that know a lot about a lot of things. And they're a lot of help. We're gonna have this front end in to the point where we can put the stock tires and wheels back on it and make this thing roll. We're still waiting for my new bender. We're waiting for the dies. We're gonna cut the front of the end of this off and make a tube front and a bunch of stuff. Now yeah, we're waiting on the rim. So anyway, we might be pushing this out and bring my JK frame in. What do you guys think? Should we start on the JK for a little bit while we wait on stuff? We have everything we need to make my JK frame a rolling chassis, except for shocks. We never have shocks, but I have shocks for the Bronco. We started a merch deal last Friday. If you buy a It's Dinner Time shirt, you get one of our silver hats 50% off. We're trying to blow out the Dinner Time shirts. We're trying to blow out the silver hats. That way we can bring the Bronx Star shirts in and we're bringing back the silver camo hats. We're bringing back the silver camo hats and we're getting some limited edition Bronx Star shirts. Head over to RobbieLayton.com, get yourself an It's Dinner Time shirt, buy yourself a silver hat for 50% off and look awesome, just like dinner. While he's grinding, I'm gonna hurry and weld the buns in this upper link so that we can get that mocked up also. One is expertly made. So these upper links are 75% of the lowers, just like Paul told me to do. On the upper links on the frame side, we have a few different options on brackets. So I've got these brackets and I've got these. And I've got these. So we're gonna do one of three. And I'm not totally sure which one we're gonna use, but I'm gonna cut these these are meant for an axle tube. So I'm gonna cut them flat and see how they're gonna look. With inexperience comes not sure what to do. Figure it out as you go. Don't screw it up, we don't have any more. All right, so we'll get these cut off and then we'll mock it up and see if that's what we want. We wanna get that upper link completely level. Right, we may end up using these, who knows. We're gonna start with this.
Third time's a charm. All right, so we got these brackets cut. I think they're gonna work awesome. They're even notched right here, so it can go around the frame a little bit. We'll be able to penetrate the weld. We're gonna put these up in there and just kind of see what they look like. If we drop the axle down a little bit, we can get these level. And then we should have four inches and it shouldn't bind here. I hope. Oh yeah, that's not gonna hit. Okay, go back down. That's perfect. Once we get the two upper links in, then it's time to articulate the front end. We've almost got this Bronco four linked and I'm pretty excited. For the first one, it's turning out great. All right, so we have two of these under hoist safety stands. We've got one put together and it's under the Bronx star right now. So Hillbilly's getting the second one put together. Our friends over at Harbor Freight sent it to us. And these things are amazing. They're super heavy duty and they're gonna help us stay safe underneath. But this one's gonna hold up that upper link to where we can get it positioned and get it tack welded in place. And then we'll do the other side. All right, so now what we're gonna do is get this all positioned to where nothing binds. And I've got the strut up here so we can see and make sure that we don't put it in relation to that in the way. All right, so we've got 2.7 degrees going downhill just a little bit. So once we get this on its own suspension, we can just pump those ORIs up a little bit, get those top links level, the rears will be level, and this thing's gonna work awesome. We've got our 10 inches of separation up here. We got this link where we want. It's not gonna interfere with the ORI. I'm gonna tack the front. We're gonna install the other side and then we're gonna let it down and we're gonna really cycle it through and see if we've got any bind. Yeah, just touch him. Do you think it'll sit this far out though? I think it'll sit more like right here. So the only issue we might run into is depending on the offset of the wheels that are on its way, we might hit this upper link. So we're just gonna leave it tacked. Once the wheels are here, we'll be able to figure everything out. But as of right now, we're gonna run with this and do the other side, it's just gonna be tacked. All right, so he's getting the drive line out of the way. We just wanted to make sure that wherever we put these links, there was no interference with the drive line. Luckily, there's no interference. All right, so that bracket's tacked. Now we're gonna make it tacked. And this front end should be where it needs to be. We're gonna articulate this suspension to see if all of the fruits of our labor was worth it. All right, we're gonna get the Badlands off-road jack underneath the axle. We're gonna cut our supports. And we're gonna twist this and see what it does. All right, so Hillbilly just cut all the bars out and you can see it's, it's moving, but we're gonna check to make sure that it has at least four inches of up travel and 10 inches of down travel. Back up, down, down. All right, right there, okay, that's supposed to be right height. So that's six inches, now pull it up, push, 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 push. All right, stop. That's like a ton, a ton of travel. I'm gonna let the jack down and you're gonna push that down until it hits the floor. All right, so we're binding right there at 14 inches of drop. So we only lose 1.4 degrees on the pinion. And we have 14 inches of drop. So we're gonna need to move these out further. For sure. Back to the drawing board. But not tonight. All right, so we've got a few things we need to tweak on this front end. Without the wheels and tires on it, without the struts in, the, in place, we're not gonna move anything. We're just gonna kind of leave it where it's at. I mean, it's articulating. We're getting about eight inches out of it, what we figure, and it needs 10 before it binds. We're gonna need a few more things in place before we do any more modifying or anything like that. We're gonna get it welded back in place. We'll weld our bars back in. That way we can put the stock wheels and tires on it and we can move it out if we need to. So if we're waiting on more stuff, we'll just push it off the lift, but at least the axles are in. All right, as always, we appreciate you. If you enjoyed this video, go check out this one.